After I made my 3D printed Wankel engine, I got a lot of feedback from people wanting to see a simpler design. One that didn't use valves, but instead relied on the position of the rotor to control air inlet and exhaust. And lucky for me, some schmuck just recently messaged me on Discord. He was interested in building his own air-powered Winkel engine for his YouTube channel, and he was eager to make some improvements to the design. His name? Integza. Yep, really. And of course, I was absolutely thrilled to be able to work with him. He's a really smart guy, and he's got some absolutely insane inventions and videos. So we synced up, I sent him all my files, and after not too long, he sent me this. His valveless Winkle engine, which takes advantage of the kinetic energy of the incoming air by acting as both a turbine and an engine propelled by the expansion of the gases. Plus, there's this connection tube in the housing to connect the two sides of the engine, which allows the engine to use the compressed air even more efficiently. And to top it all off, it uses graphite rods as seals for the apex rather than the rubber seals that I used, which provides a dry lubrication that has much lower friction. But this is only working because the engine was designed to be printed on a resin 3D printer, which has far better tolerances and a smoother surface finish. Oh yeah, by the way, I got a resin printer. But anyway, if you want to hear more about this engine design and how it was made, check out Intex's video. Link is below. This video is more about the application, where I somehow end up building my own custom pressure regulator and learning how to run CFD analyses to optimize my design. And why would I venture so far down this rabbit hole? I'm building a Winkle powered boat, of course. But unlike their typical engines, which function pretty similar to modern piston engines, mine will be using a compressed air powered Winkle engine. So I got to work in CAD. But I really didn't know where to begin. I knew the basic concept of how to build a boat, but I've never actually designed one before, and definitely not a paddle boat. That's when a member of my Discord server suggested I'd give SimScale a try. It's a free online tool which allows you to run CFD analyses with relative ease. And what is CFD? It's a way to simulate common fluids and their flow. This can help to design efficient propellers, aerodynamics on cars, or in my case, a boat that actually moves forwards. And hopefully the work put in beforehand will help ensure this project doesn't take too many iterations to perfect, because let's face it, this hole is a pretty big print. So let's hop right into my first attempt in the beautiful world of simulated flow. This was a really primitive setup, testing only the hull of the boat without simulating any of the paddle wheel. So what exactly is in this setup? Well, it's one giant solid body which represents the water around my boat, or at least half of it. I then define all the outer surfaces of this box. The front is a velocity inlet at 0.5 meters a second, the back is a pressure outlet, and all of the walls have their own configurations to represent realistic conditions. So after hitting run, we end up with some pretty colors and graphs. And to be honest with you, I really don't know how to read these graphs, so I'm just going to look at the pictures instead. Here's a top view showing the fluid velocity around the boat. and. Well, there's a few bad things going on. Most obviously, my boat has an enormous wake behind it. The wake is basically how far after the object it takes for the flow to return to a normal speed. Also not helping, there is a very large pressure front at the very tip of the boat, because for some reason I thought a rounded bow would work better than a pointed one. I was obviously wrong. And finally, the biggest problem of all, there's no paddle wheel, which would significantly change the dynamics of flow in that region. So let's go ahead and fix all these. And after many attempts, I was finally able to successfully simulate a spinning paddle wheel while this whole boat moves forward through the water, which is where I discovered my next issue. The paddle wheel wasn't working so well. Rather than pushing air backwards, which would propel the boat forwards, it was pushing water down and also leaving an enormous low pressure cavity right behind it. Neither of those are good. So I made a few tweaks to the design, tested it again, and that seemed to help. But still not fully satisfied, I made a few more tweaks, and now it's looking way better. The paddle wheel is directing thrust more horizontally backwards, and better yet, the water behind the boat is actually moving faster than the water coming in which means this boat is producing forwards thrust. And now one final feature I found in this program, simulating the flow using colored lines. Alright, so at this point I was pretty happy with the performance in CFD, so I went ahead and printed the hole. All 
I ran a few quick tests in my sink and used superglue to patch any of the leaky areas in the boat. And after mounting the paddle wheel, I discovered that the steel axle was just adding way too much weight to the rear of the boat. A delicious counterweight helps, but reducing the weight of the rear would just be a better solution. So I made the absolutely overkill decision to switch to a carbon fiber axle, which is, unsurprisingly, a lot lighter. Next up, the engine. So I grabbed the files from Tegza, made a few modifications so that it would work with the bearings I had on hand, and then printed it out on my resin 3D printer. Once all the parts were cleaned and cured, it was just a matter of assembling. And soon enough, it was ready. I must say, using a resin printer had way better results than FDM, which got me thinking. No, no, one project at a time. But spoiler, yeah, I might just be printing a liquid piston engine. Stay tuned. But let's get back to this wankle. It took quite a lot of tuning and tweaking. But eventually... But here's the problem. With one liter of air, the engine will only spin for a few seconds at most. I need a lot more air. But I can't really go the CO2 route like Integza did because I'm testing this in a city and I don't want any risk of that going wrong. So instead I upgraded to a 2 liter bottle, which is easier said than done. I haven't bought anything that came in a 2 liter bottle in ages, but I took one for the team, bought some root beer, and made ice cream floats. Yes, I'm 12, but they were great. Even after all that, it didn't really help that much. The engine spins a little longer, but it's it's still not enough for me. I need a better solution. Most air compressors use a constant pressure regulator. This allows them to store very high pressure in the tank so that they can put as much as possible in, but provide a steady, predictable output at a much lower pressure. So I could have just went ahead and bought one of these, but where's the fun in that? So I designed my own 3D printed one. And would you look at that, it worked on the first try. Well, after a few failed attempts that I didn't show you anyway. But how does this work, and why is it any different than just forcing air through a small hole? Well, first off, shoving air through a small hole would definitely reduce the output flow, and it would help the engine run a little bit longer. The problem is, the output flow will very quickly decay below a certain threshold which would no longer be able to run the engine. And if the pressure is below that minimum threshold to spin the engine, it's just wasted air. Instead, we want a constant pressure regulator, which will provide a constant output just slightly above what the engine needs, and it will continue to provide that as long as there's at least that much pressure in the reservoir tank. This means I can run the engine for the absolute most amount of time possible using my reservoir. And as for how it works, well, it's actually pretty simple. Here's a cross section of my 3D printed version, which is a diaphragm based design. This is the input, and this is the output. Initially, air will be allowed through this ball valve here and into the output chamber. But as the pressure on the output side rises, it will begin to inflate the diaphragm which will raise this arm and compress the spring. Now once the output reaches a very specific pressure, the rod attached to the diaphragm will no longer be holding open the input valve. At this point, the output air supply is going to be used and the pressure will drop a little and then reopen the valve to allow more air through. The result is a pretty stable output of a lower pressure air, regardless of the input pressure. And does this actually help in practice? Here's the runtime of 60 PSI directly injected to the engine, and here it is using the regulator. No doubt it runs a lot slower with the regulator, but I care more about runtime here, not max power. Okay, so the engine is ready. Let's put it into the paddle boat, hook up a belt, and now you'll see why I'm using a flywheel. My drive belt is actually a rubber band, which is really stretchy. So the flywheel here helps maintain a stable engine output speed despite the uh, potentially bouncy load that's going to be put onto it. Using a rubber band as a belt was a huge pain, it kept trying to climb out of my grooves, so I 3D printed a pulley with a very very deep groove, and that seemed to help quite a bit. And with all these changes, I'm still getting about 5 seconds of runtime on 1 liter of air at 50 psi, which is good. So now it's time to put the finishing touches on the boat, and let's give it a full test. So this is using now the 2 liter supply at 100 psi. Not bad. Now, 
Initially I planned on making this boat remote controlled, but it really doesn't last long enough for that to be useful at all. So instead I'm just going to have it go straight. So time to test it in the real world. Yeah, how about something a little calmer? Yeah, that's a lot better. Alright, let's go. Now all these tests are being run with approximately 80 to 100 psi in the air tank. So no surprise, this is not a very good paddle boat. It's not even really a very good boat. It keeps taking on a lot of water because, well, it's a bad boat. But it does paddle, it does move, and it's all using 3D printed air powered Winkle engines. So that's a win in my book. Now, if you enjoyed this video and this engine, you should definitely check out Texas' new video, where he uses the same exact engine in a 3D printed car. Link will also be in the description below. As always, a huge thank you to all my Patreons. If you enjoy my projects and would like to support yourself, the link for that is below. Subscribe so you don't miss future projects. Leave a comment below if you had any thoughts or suggestions. And thanks for watching. Until next time.